Okay, we're going to start doing some applications now. The first one is going to be the vapor power plant, which is shown here. And you can see I've got basically four parts, A, B, C, and D. A is basically where the combustion happens. That's, you know, in, in kind of a traditional coal fire. This is where they burn the coal. And that is used to supply heat to my Rankine cycle, which is the focus of what we're looking at here in thermodynamics. That is uh, the boiler for um, B there. Okay, and then from the boiler, there's also this turbine. That's basically a thing that gets the blade spinning. Once that blade starts spinning, basically it's hooked to an electrical generator. That's what actually generates the electricity that is then shipped out to uh, the various consumers. Okay, so um, then we go into the condenser. Okay, that's um, we have this cooling tower. Um, a lot of times this is on uh, rivers. Uh, the heat is put into the river at a certain amount uh, based on environmental codes and things of that nature. Okay, But really we're going to focus on B um, in here, and that's really the Rankine cycle. So combustion is outside the scope of this course. It's towards the end of the book if you want to look at that. Uh, the electrical generator, that's um, you know kind of outside of thermal altogether, uh, taking rotational energy, turning it into electrical energy. And we'll talk a little bit about the, the condenser, the cooling water, but maybe not necessarily the heat transfer that goes behind it, but the you know temperature, the cooling water coming in and out. Okay, But really the focus boils down to uh, what's in B, which is our, our Rankine cycle. So I've got the schematic here. I've also got the temperature versus entropy diagram to help us go through things. Okay, And again, with our systems, we go through and we go state by state setting the state. Here, because I've got the fluid flow, I'm looking for H values. So once I get those H values, I can then, you know, find the work of things, the heat transfer, things of that nature. So my turbine's isentropic for an ideal Rankine cycle. Okay, so if it's isentropic, then there's no heat transfer. Okay, the work is just delta H. Okay, um, my condenser, my heating processes are both constant pressure processes. Okay, so there's no work going on, basically just heat transfer. And really what this is, the heat transfer is again delta H, you know, two to three. Okay. But we can also use that to help me, again, find what's going on with the cooling water, okay, where I've got a different mass flow of cooling water uh, in and out. I can use those H values. You know, that'll help me find, uh, it could help me find the mass flow rates, could help me find temperatures in and out of the cooling water, d different things of that nature. Again, that cooling water is a separate process. One, two, three, four is really what we're looking at here. Okay. The pump is also isentropic. Now, if you'll remember, we talked about uh, an isentropic steady state flow of an incompressible um, um, fluid. Okay. So really, my, I mean, we already know that it's delta H, right? But it's also V delta P. If you look back into the last section of chapter 6, Okay, and we're going to use that to our advantage because oftentimes we know our pressures. We can actually use this V delta P to help me set that final state H because, again, those H values are what is completely crucial to us. And keep in mind with the pump, we're in liquid, so a lot of times we don't have tables. So we use the pressure to help me figure out uh, that, that H value that I'm looking at. Okay, and then the boiler, again... Uh, there is a constant pressure. There's no work being done, so really the QN is just delta H. One thing to keep in mind, uh, these have directions, right? And we talked about directions when we talked about entropy, okay? So we're always getting positive values here. But again, remember, Q out is negative, you know, in the general sense of a first law, right? Work out is positive, okay? But again, these are giving me the direction. You can see the work of the turbine is out, the work of the pump is in. So the turbine is positive work out, the pump is positive work in, okay? But again, when we apply that first law, just remember how things are going. We, we, we like positive numbers, but these have directions, okay? So when we get to our thermal efficiency, the work of the cycle is the work of the turbine minus the work of the pump. Okay, or the positive work of the term, turbine minus the positive work of the pump, right? The pump, is, there's work being put onto the system, so it's negative work. 
determines that. That's where that negative sign comes from. But all of these values, again, we, we generally deal with in positive terms, knowing the direction, whether it's in or out, that sort of thing. Okay, so again, so we're at the cycle over QN, where QN, again, is the, 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 the Q of the boiler. Okay, then we have a back work ratio. Uh, that's really just the ratio of the pump to the turbine. Okay, and generally we want this low. We want to get more out than what we're putting in sort of thing. So as low as possible is generally good. It's just a, a value that's sometimes useful to, to have. Okay, now as far as performance of this Rankine cycle, okay, you remember when we talked about the Carnot cycle, right? The bigger the difference in the temperature, better performance. Whole idea, same thing happens here, right? If I increase the pressures, that's going to result in the temperature going up, right? An increased pressure uh, under the vapor dome means increased temperature, okay? So again, when I have that bigger temperature difference or that bigger pressure difference, in a case here, my um, thermal efficiency is actually going to be better. Now, I have some limits here. For example, uh, you can't, um, the lower pressure, you don't go below, um, you know, the ambient temperature because otherwise you won't get the heat out that you need. So you're kind of limited by whatever the ambient temperature is for how far down uh, you can take the the low pressure, okay, because you still need that heat transfer going from a hotter to a colder sort of idea, okay. But in general, the, the bigger you push these pressures in both directions, the better your performance will be. Now, let's go ahead and compare this to the Carnot cycle, right? So the Carnot cycle is the rectangle, right, where we've got isothermal, isentropic, back and forth, okay. So the thing here is to, to exploit what's going on with combustion, which again, we haven't got, you know, that's beyond the scope of the course that we're dealing with here. But generally we want as cool of a temperature as possible for state four going into the boiler. So I can get that bigger temperature difference to get a kind of a more efficient uh, heat transfer. Again, kind of beyond what we're talking about in this course, but you get the idea that if I've got a lower temperature um, going into the boiler, I'm going to get a lot more heat transfer uh, from the combustion gases to the um, to the um, you know the boiler uh, stream that I've got going on here. Okay, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is pump, which is process three to four. It can really only handle a single state. It can only handle a liquid. So we got to push three all the way down to the um, saturate liquid, pump it up to a higher pressure, then throw it into the boiler, okay? Because of that, though, I have a decreased performance compared to, again, the ideal situation, which is a Carnot cycle, okay? But in, in actuality, you know, there's some limitations to that Carnot cycle, so we, we use this Rankine cycle, okay? Now, again, we could have some irreversibilities. Keep those in mind, okay? In the previous slide, we were talking about the ideal situation, you know, I, here I have a turbine. It could have a, a, an isentropic efficiency we talked about, okay? Ideal would be constant entropy, okay? Then, you know, so that's the H2S. I could find the best case ent uh, enthalpy, okay? Use that to, and then knowing that I have a 90% efficient turbine, I can find the actual enthalpy at state two. Again, the whole idea is setting these states. Same thing happens with the pump. Okay, uh, just kind of the reciprocal of that, where it's the uh, best case over the actual case. Remember, the best case is also that isentropic uh, steady state flow of an incompressible fluid, right, where that's V delta P. So again, we can use that V delta P to actually help us set state four, find that enthalpy of state four, which again is going to be necessary to find kind of Q in and things of that nature and help us set our state. Okay, so, you know, if you have efficiencies, then you need to apply that. Again, we talked about that back in Chapter 6. So that's the, the, the initial ideal uh, Rankine cycle. We'll, we'll add to this uh, as we move along, but that gives you a handle of the, the initial idea of it.